do things right now. <laughs> it's not that hard to talk to people, to meet new people. Because I started when I was 18, so two years ago. And when I walked the Camino, even people that were over 60, they talked to me like a friend. If you're between two options, give you a lot of time to think about. It allows you to go, it allows you to be free, because you know that the Camino will provide for you. Hi, we are Eric and Ricky. We not only walk Camino de Santiago and try the best food, but we also help others in the preparation and ask them important questions. Today we'll ask, what are your lessons on the Camino, especially as a young pilgrim? Hola, I'm Sarah from Germany. I'm 19 years old and I finished yesterday the um, Portuguese uh, coast way. I took the coast way all the way through um, and I don't have as much ocean in Germany as I do um, here. Um, it was kind of the first time I saw the ocean. My name is Matt, I'm from Czech Republic and I'm 19 years old. This was my first Camino and I did the northern route from Bilbao and then I switched to Primitivo in Oviedo and then finished in Finisterra. How many days it took you? It took me 30 days. I always wanted to travel and this seems like a nice option for my first solo journey. I've met a lot of people, a lot of amazing people. So my name is Nicholas Tansky. I'm 22 years old. I'm from California, um, like Central Coast, and I just finished the Camino Frances from Saint Jean Pied de Port. I did a semester abroad living in Donosti, San Sebastian, um, and the Camino del Norte kind of starts around that area. And I remember thinking to myself, I've seen these pilgrims. I didn't know they were pilgrims at the time. I just saw seashell backpackers and I'm like what's that about you know um, I love backpacking so I started asking questions and learning about how people come from all over the world um, to pursue um, emotional physical spiritual growth and I just knew it was something that I wanted to do um, in my timeline and I graduated from university about a month ago. I've got a nice chunk of time and I just felt like it has to be now. Um. Uh, I'm Dominic, 23 years old, and I walked the Camino del Norte, uh, yeah, from, uh, I'm from Alemania, from Germany. And I walked from Germany uh, to Irun and then from Irun to uh, Santiago here. Uh, complete 2,500 kilometers. My name is Lucy, I'm from Czech Republic. I'm 20 years old and I finished Camino del Norte and Primitivo. And this is my third Camino. I'm not getting it. <laughs> what makes you to walk the third Camino by the age of 20? Uh, the freedom that Camino gives me and also the way that people talk to me. Because I started when I was 18, so two years ago and it was after I graduated high school and before that a lot of adult has me like I'm a kid only and when I walked the Camino even people that were over 60 they talked to me like a friend so it, it's so nice. Um, I'm a sport trainer, fitness trainer, um, working in a sport club uh, for fitness and uh, yeah train um, a lot of difficult person, uh, children, um, normal workers or seniors um, to help with their problems. I want to go out of my uh, normal days. I want to go out of uh, friends, family. Yeah, go out of my comfort zone to meet people, to meet people I don't know the language, so I have to communicate uh, and yeah, that's why. So I quit my job uh, three weeks ago because I didn't like the office uh, and I'm going back to school in September so I have this gap of two months and I thought why not walk the Camino and I um, didn't trust myself to do the 900 or 800 
walk on the France one, so I chose Porto to Santiago. My screen time on uh, my phone was kind of high, it was like 40 hours, yeah, no, uh, a week. And um, I also work at the office job, so it's more. And um, I'm trying not to use my phone on this trip. I have this uh, flip phone. Yeah, and yeah, it worked. So you <laughs> so, try to disconnect? Yeah, it's just the social um, detox, digital detox. What did your family say about you, especially in the young age, walking the Camino de Santiago? They weren't happy. Uh, at first they were a bit mad that I'm going alone, away, so far away from home. But then they understood that th this is just something that I want to do and they are happy for me. What is your family thinking about you walking the Camino in this age? When I said them at the age of 18 that I want to go to the, uh, Spain for a month, they were like, no, <laughs> like you, like they wasn't really sure about it, but uh, then I explained it what it is. And uh, I also tell them that I earn my own money, so I will pay for it all and they don't have to worry about. Then we're like, okay, you can go, but you have to call us every day. Now, because it is my third Camino, they are totally fine with it. I don't have to call every day, like maybe once or twice a week. So they get it now, yeah. Did you learn something about yourself that you didn't know before on the Camino? Yeah, I kind of appreciate things more, like uh, that not as many people have the ability to just go on this trip and they have to save a long time. And I have this um, state where I still live with my parents and I had this time to save my money and they, some people don't. I appreciate that. At first, yeah, of course, my family was worried about, but I made for my family a WhatsApp broadcast channel um, where I, like every day or close to every day, write something, uh, what I, what was my adventure, um, what I see, what I, where I live um, at the moment. Uh, but they're really proud of me, yeah. Do you, how did you prepare for Camino? I, I didn't really prepare. Um, I was busy with school and finals and graduation and senior project. I, I liked the Camino because I knew I didn't have to prepare. I booked a flight and I knew I'd figure it out. Obviously, I thought about my pack and what I wanted to bring, um, what I knew I could buy out there. And I've done research and I've talked with people, but I didn't know what my pace was going to be. I didn't know where I was going to be staying. Um, so I took it one step at a time. I figured out how to get to St. Jean and I walked until I needed to sleep and then I found a place to sleep. It's definitely, it's, it's a physical challenge. I think for me, um, that, that was something I, I felt like I had some confidence going into this because I do a lot of backpacking back home. Um, but being able to do this for so many days at a time was, was a challenge. I think, um, mentally and emotionally, like it served me a lot of time to think and a lot of time to process and reflect. Um, even just walking into Santiago today, I, I, you know, I just had a moment where I had to sit down on this field like 5K out and it was just very emotional the last five kilometers. Um, and that's not something that you can prepare someone for. You can't, I can't tell you what you're gonna think about and I, there were many things I wasn't prepared to be thinking about. Were there any difficult moments during your Camino? They were... Like... One night specifically was difficult for me. But the rest was good. 
I wanted to quit that one day. What happened? Uh, it was... Uh, I'd rather not talk about it. If that's okay. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. How did you manage? I've met new people, new amazing people. They've helped a lot. That's the main reason, I think. Do you think that Camino de Santiago, it's a good experience for a young person? It opened my eyes that it's not that hard to talk to people, to meet new people, to meet the culture of the place. I don't have to think really about the next days. Uh, my, my worries about where I can sleep, what I can eat, it will going. It, it works every time and even in Spain here, I don't prepare for the next days. Make less worries about my whole life, so. It's important. Is there any lesson to be learned from the Camino, especially in the beginning of your life? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, I've learned like uh, to be more open, to don't judge people, and that everyone is different and also don't like take everything easy like don't, don't be too fast it's not that hard like everyone thinks because when you say yeah i'm going to walk 800 kilometers they were like wow that's so many no you walk between 20 and 30 kilometers a day that's a small step basically and it's not that hard as people think and also it's about meeting people from all around the world and just experience something totally different. And you will remember basically every day from a month. So, uh, and that's not something you will experience in your normal life. Like you can't just say what you did two months ago, like, I don't know. Don't waste time. Um, wake up early. <laughs> Um, do things right now, <laughs> um, talk to people, they're nice, nice right? everywhere just people, everywhere you go on the planet it's just people. Would you recommend this experience to any young people and why? Uh, I'd recommend it to um, take time off from a stressed life or just to anyone. I met a woman, her two sons passed away uh, and she had a lot of grief. I think that's helpful too. Just to have a purpose to walk and nothing else, just following the arrows and time to think. I think a big lesson <laughs> that I learned through practice was the importance of <laughs> reflection and processing. So I wanna, I've never been big on I never journaled consistently, but one of my big goals was to try and journal every day or every other day. Um, and I think dedicating time to really reflect and write down my thoughts helped me work through some things like emotionally. And um, that's something I want to bring into my next chapter. Like, I want to be better at um, existing in the moment and reflecting on each experience rather than maybe being stuck in a past thought or thinking about the future. Um, I think the big lesson is simplify your life and focus on the present and what each opportunity has to offer for you. What did you feel when you get into the Finisterre and look at the horizon? Amazing. Oh. I felt like the end of the journey arrived and that something new is starting hopefully and then something old is ending but the moment of realization was when i when the bus from finisterra to santiago started driving it was like the realization of the end that i'm not working anymore that was, I think, like the worst feeling of the whole Camino. A new, new chapter starts right now, eh? Yes. A beautiful chapter. Eh? Yes, I hope so.
You know what they say that actually the Camino starts after you finish? Yes. So I wish you that, my friend. I wish you that. that Thank you. You have a beautiful new chapter in your life. Thank you. Hearing those inspiring stories, you might be feeling motivated to start your Camino journey. Before you embark, consider joining us on a special retreat designed to prepare you both physically and mentally. Our retreat offers personal guidance, expert advice and a supportive community to ensure you're ready for adventure ahead. Sign up to secure your spot and start your Camino with confidence. Click the link below to learn more and register for our pre-Camino retreat. Don't miss this opportunity to make your Camino experience truly unforgettable.